Uh, my name is Manny, Manny Ling. I'm a, I'm a designer. Uh, I'm an academic. I teach at the University of Sunderland. I lecture in, in, in graphic design. Um, I'm also a calligrapher and, and I'm beginning to become an artist as well. So I'm very confused at times because I don't know what I'm doing and I just do it because I like, enjoy, uh, I, I just enjoy doing things. So in some ways it doesn't really, I don't really categorize myself uh, as anything. Um, so I was born in Hong Kong, so I was very, uh, uh, I got quite emotional at one stage hearing uh, Charlotte talk about the umbrella movement. Um, you know, as, as someone born in Hong Kong, I, I feel as though I'm, I should be part of that and I couldn't. You know. Uh, anyway, uh, just to fast track, uh, I was um, brought up most of my life in England, so I'm kind of climatized, if you like. Um, these, uh, Shirley, you mentioned about um, you know you start to dreaming in a in a, in a, in a, in a foreign language, uh, and now uh, I, I I I remember that very well when I was about 13, 14. I realised I was dreaming in English, and I was. Uh, I was very uh, petrified at, at first, thinking I'm losing my roots. What's going on? And now I don't even care. I, I just dream in uh, English all the time now. So, okay. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I do lots of design work. I specialize in typography. Uh, it's, it's my thing. Uh, I was trained as a typographer. And the thing that we it, about typography is, is that we we uh, deal with language all the time and to make language beautiful on a page. And yet, we know 99% of the audience wouldn't even see the beauty of typography. You know, they wouldn't see the difference between Comic Sans and Times Roman and whatever, you know? So anyway, um, yeah, so I do a lot of um, uh, exhibition catalogues. Um, this is a recent one that I did for the Atkinson Gallery in Liverpool. However, what I enjoy doing the most is getting my hands dirty. Um, I have this analogy of, you know, we're dealing with digits, we're talking about digital culture, digital media. To me, we're dealing with digits as in the keyboard, computation, codes, but as a calligrapher, I also use uh, different kinds of digits, which are my fingers, um, to create the artwork. So, that kind of, um, Comparison. There's lots of um, contrasts and contradictions in, 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 in what I do. So I mainly do um, calligraphic pieces to deal again with writing and language. Um, because I'm Chinese, I, um, I very often look back on um, sort of East Asian um, traditions and philosophies and to trying to integrate that into my work. I also like collaborating with other artists. Uh, for example, Christine um, is, a, is a Sumi painter from Japan, and her work's fabulous. And it's actually quite scary to receive the artwork and then having to do the calligraphy on top of the artwork. You can imagine the, you know, how tense it could be. Um, and here's a, a close-up of the writing. I enjoy life and I, I look at life as my inspiration. It sounds very corny, but I do, um, particularly um, um, nature. Um, so in fact, my, my writing, my calligraphy is actually inspired by elements of nature. And I hope you can see these elements of plants and growth in the writing. Um, I also paint in the Eastern way using Sumi ink and Shun paper, which is Chinese paper. <laughs> It's very fragile, but at the same time, it has a resilience. And when you mount it onto uh, a stiffer mount board, the, the tonality of the ink changes, um, which is really interesting. Um, I did three pieces of work um, for the gallery in Ward Street, so hopefully we'll have a chance to have a look at these. Um, these are um, a mixture of traditional and digital work. Um, so the background is Sumi ink, and then uh, I scan, scan the background into Photoshop, manipulated it, and then apply the, um, the writing on top.
part of the perks of being an academic is that I, uh, I supervise quite a few PhD students uh, dealing with digital media. Um, this is uh, a, a research by Carl Gregg, one of my students, and um, he actually built a drawing machine where he actually computes programs and then to, to make different marks on paper. Um, these are all the names of survivors of the Holocaust, Holocaust and, um, and just by changing a number on a code, you would change the mark it makes from that to that, just by changing the number of the parameter. So to me that's a very interesting thing about digital media, or opposed to traditional methods, is that there's the impermanence and there's a variety, there's a freedom in in changing and adapting things uh, at will, which you couldn't have with um, traditional methods to a certain extent. Um, I like mixing different medias. So here's a uh, where we um, using processing to um, create the codes, which is then fed through to um, a laser cutting machine, and then the marks are then laser etched onto a piece of paper which we uh, then scan. So in terms of the speed, um, it would affect how heavy the, the, the burn marks are on the paper. And then taking the, the burning of paper to a more uh, extensive way, we have a, a wonderful glass department at Sunderland National Glass Centre, and I was able to actually use hot glass and burn marks onto paper to create artwork such as this. So the artwork here, are each piece of paper is about A2 size. So the marks on the top are actually created by molten glass, um, strands of glass and so on burnt onto paper. Um, here's a close-up of that. A lot of my work, as you can see, are very um, instantaneous. Um, Unlike, I would imagine, if you were a digital artist, you would plan things a lot, you would to conceive the ideas, you would uh, write the codes, you would program things. With me, it's very immediate, and it's, it's, most of my work takes no time at all to do, but <laughs> it's always saying that it takes 30 years for me to, to able to do that, uh, 30 years of training uh, and thinking and so on. So, let's talk about intercultural practices. Um, very often we hear the term East meets West, but how often do we say West meets East? And I think with the sort of globalization now, that's becoming more apparent. Um, so talking about myself, I'm, I'm in a very peculiar situation. So I'm Chinese, brought up in England, and then I'm, for my research, I'm actually looking back to the East for inspiration. So I'm a Western designer, Western artist, as a Chinese. So I'm totally confused at times, but that doesn't matter. So where do I fit in? Well, normally you would think I, I fit in right in the middle. It's perfect, you know? But it doesn't happen like that. What happens is that this happens. You know, you go east and west all the time. There's no sort of happy medium, which is great. But when you deal with digital practices and traditional practices, there's even more confusions and conflicts and integrations and harmonies. So for example here, this piece of work, if I didn't tell you that the writing is actually a font that I've designed years ago, so realistically that is not a piece of calligraphy, it's a piece of typography, okay? It's all about terminologies at the end of the day, but you know, um, if you're a calligrapher, you would probably look down on this piece of work because it's not real calligraphy, it's actually type. Yeah, typography or design. And quite often with intercultural uh, practices, we, we very often just look at practices, you know, processes, materials, how we do things. Um, but we don't often talk about language. And to me, for my research, language is the key in to most of um, what I do. Because without understanding the language that you're dealing with, either in English or Chinese, uh, it's difficult to really um, understand or appreciate the nuances or the subtleties of certain things that you need to know in order to create uh, the artwork. Um, 
through language, you, you know, we get to understand tradition, our, uh, the cultural identities, philosophy, and, and of course the writing itself. And there's one thing that I always remember when I was doing my research, uh, a famous artist, uh, Chen Zheng, who, who, who was from China, uh, I think in the 80s he, he moved to um, Paris in order to learn about Western art practices. And he wrote in his book that for two years he did no artwork and all, all, all he did was to learn French because he said in order to, to be successful or to, uh, as a Western practitioner, you need to understand the language, you need to understand the culture. So that, that, that always kind of uh, had a big impact on me about really understanding the, uh, the, the language that you're dealing with when you are doing intercultural um, work. Because at the end of the day, the artwork that you produce has to be authentic to the culture, to the practice, and to yourself, most importantly. So just to give you a, a very simple example, um, when we you know, look at the, the word calligraphy, and you're trying to define it, in the West, it's just it simply means beautiful writing. It's very simple, okay? Calligraphy in the West is about beautiful writing. But however, if you look at Chinese, uh, the word shu fa, is, it, it means the method of writing. Or in Japanese, it's shu du, so it's the way of writing. So straight away, there's a much more philosophical connotation to the meanings. It's not quite straightforward, okay? Um, so when we're dealing with language, um, you really have to perhaps understand the nuances of things. And to me, when you study language or when you do intercultural practices, there's always lots of contrasts and contradictions that happen. And if we delve deeper into uh, another concept, perhaps the concept of qi, you probably have heard of the term qi, qi as in the energy within us, the essence of something that we do. Um, qi is a character of qi written by my uh, good friend, it's a good calligrapher, uh, Edmund Toe. Qi in Chinese means breath or the spirit of something. And Chinese is a pictogram, uh, pictographic language. So by looking at certain characters, you can actually um, decipher certain meanings from it if you know what to look for. For example here, the, the, the character um, here on his own means rice, okay? And the other characters here um, kind of suggest the eaves of a house. So the idea is that when you cook your rice, the steam would rise up to the eaves of the house. And that suggests this kind of movement of air, um, movement of steam and so on. Life itself, basically. So it's a very interesting concept, isn't it? So it's not very straightforward, you know, like English. Yeah? Okay. And the other thing is, particularly with Chinese language or, or Asian languages, um, a lot of things are very subtle and they contradict themselves. So for example here, you know, if you're trying to understand qi, um, qi is an elusive term, one whose meaning can be sensed without difficulty, but which no simple def definition can cover. The fundamental fact that it has to be grasped through intuition indicates that an intellectual definition would fall far short. So, straight away, if you're trying to do a PhD about qi, <laughs> you've got a problem. <laughs> how do you intellectualize it and how, how do you actually um, articulate it? Here's another one. Qi has little to do with intellectual analysis or intentional making or efforts. Uh, it, it also has little to do with struggling or forcing. It is a gentle and natural flow of energy that is open to spontaneity and lies largely in the realm of non-thinking. It's a relaxed but highly focused and concentrated force that manifests in a non-hesitating, decisive and unbroken stream which can be only, only be cultivated with sustained training. So, you know, when you have to deal with qi or aspects of that uh, and have that in your artwork, here's a contradiction, is that you don't actually think that you're using qi at all. You know, um, so sometimes it's very confusing. Anyway, so what's qi in the context of calligraphy or what I do? Again, 
through my practice and research, I really have to understand what it means. So I went back to um, looking at exploring some Chinese um, philosophy or philosoph philosophical notions. Here's a term that um, we use when we practice calligraphy or painting. It's called qi yong shen dong. Excuse me, I'm not a, a Mandarin speaker, so my, my pronunciation might be uh, way off there. Basically, it's a, it's a canon of painting that, that was written back in, um, you know, about one and a half thousand years ago. And by defining each character, I was beginning to understand what qi can be. Okay, so qi, the first character, spirit, energy. Yun, you could, you could interpret that as the resonance or the rhythm of the writing. And then the third character, it means to grow, to be alive. And then the last character, to move, to touch, and so on, or movement. So if you string all those definitions together, you could say that Chen Yun Sen Dong could be described as a piece of writing or calligraphy that has spirit or energy, which resonates and has a sense of liveliness and movement. Okay? And a writer, she, uh, describes this phenomenon as the rhythmic vitality uh, in calligraphy, which is a term that is used in Western calligraphy since. So there's actually no description of this phenomena in Western calligraphy uh, or Western calligraphic tradition at all. So through this understanding of what qi is in calligraphy, with vitality, you can then actually look back in you know, work from both cultures and begin to see the energy, the liveliness, the energy, and uh, the, the, um, the personality and so on of, of the work. Here's another piece that I, I did years ago. Um, and through, it's a traditional piece of calligraphy. However, I scanned it into Photoshop and applied uh, different effects onto it um, in a simple way. Here's my font again, used in a different context. And again, the, um, the work done by Carl Gregg, PhD student. And as you can see, through all these work here, you could sense that the qi, or the qi yang shen dong of the artwork. Ultimately, I think, in whatever that we do, I think there's just there's two things in the West that we talk about, and that's about harmony and balance, trying to make things harmonize, harmonious, and to make something balanced. And ultimately, I think when we look at a piece of work, we know it's nice because it has those qualities. It's balanced, it has harmony. But in, in, in a sort of Eastern context, we believe in one thing, and that is just the unity of things. So that when you bring everything together, um, you really begin to know what it is to be human, you embody yourself in the piece of work. So, uh, lots of heavy kind of philosophical um, notions there to think about before lunch. So if you want to get in touch with me to talk about anything in more detail, here's my email. I'm more than happy to, to get in touch with you. Um, and that's it for the really. Thank you. Thanks for your attention.